Cruise of the Living Dead, a zombie anthology, part two. Redneck shouldn't play with dead things. By Scott M. Baker. It sure is quiet out here, bellowed Ike in his normal boisterous voice. Haven't heard or seen a critter in a couple hours. Maybe you scared them away by flapping that damn mouth of yours, chided Brian. We've been out here all morning and ain't seen nothing bigger than a squirrel. It ain't natural for these parts, not during hunting season. Buck spit a mouthful of Redmond into the campfire. The wad sizzled when it hit the flames. Maybe the animals are smarter than we think. Ike's right, agreed Ned. It's too quiet. Shit, man, David added. Kind of creepy if you ask me. Johnny huffed. You got a problem, Ned asked. You guys are such wimps, scared of a little dark. Ned finished his miller and tossed the empty can into the fire. Grow a pair. Like you, Brian asked. Yeah. If you're so brave, why did you bring that along? Brian pointed to the clearing where the group had parked their pickups. The truck closest to the campsite was Ned's Dodge Ram with a trailer attachment. On the trailer sat a John Deere Series 2000 tractor. No reason. Ned became sullen and avoided eye contact with the others. What's going on? Sam asked. Brian motioned toward Ned. Captain Courageous here has one fear, his wife. Since she never agreed to let him go hunting, he hitched up the tractor and told his wife some bullshit story about taking it into town for repairs. Come on, Ned said defensively. You know what she's like. From somewhere around the campfire, one of them clucked like a chicken, generating a chorus of laughs at Ned's expense. Ned responded by flipping them his middle finger, which only made them laugh harder. Sam Grodin smiled as he raised a can of Miller to his lips. He appreciated more than ever being back amongst his friends. These guys were his best friends, some of them going back as far as elementary school. They looked up to Sam because he was the only one to have gotten out of their little town in northwest Pennsylvania and make something of himself, if it meant going to Iraq to do it. He had served two hours in Baghdad and would still be there if an IED had not left him deaf in one ear and with a limp in his left leg. None of that mattered, though. He was home. Something broke through the woods 30 yards away, shattering the calm with a terrified gasp. It happened so suddenly Sam dropped his can of Miller, dousing his jacket in beer. The intruder staggered toward the campsite. Everyone jumped up and looked at each other, not sure how to respond. Brian reached down and picked up his Remington shotgun. When the intruder came close enough to be lit by the campfire, they all took a step back. Shit, man, what the hell happened to him? The intruder wore a blue flannel shirt torn in several places and soaked in blood from a gaping wound in his throat. Given the extent of the wound and the loss of blood, it seemed amazing that the intruder was still alive. He sprinted toward them, stumbled, and fell to the ground by the campfire. No one went to help him. With incredible effort, the intruder rolled over onto his back and stared up at the group. He gurgled his words a few at a time, pausing frequently to gasp for air through his ravaged throat. Please, help me. Brian knelt down beside him. What happened, buddy? We gotta warn the town before it's too late. Warn the town about what? Must warn about the attack. What attacked you? The intruder took a deep breath and groaned. The dead. The deer? Ak looked at the others. What type of deer can do that? Buck spit out a wad of tobacco. He said the dead, you idiot. What the hell does he mean by that? Ned asked. Maybe he means them. Johnny pointed to the woods from where the intruder had stumbled. A figure stood at the tree line, staring at them through vacant, yellow eyes. Even in the dim light of the campfire, Sam could see that something was horribly wrong. It wore a pair of rubber waders over a denim shirt. Like the intruder, its clothes were tattered and soaked in blood. Its skin was pale and waxy. Its right arm had been torn off just below the shoulder, the shattered bone sticking out from the gory stump. A gaping hole replaced its mouth, tattered flesh hanging from where it had chewed off its own lips, exposing teeth and gums. It paused for a second as its undead brain contemplated the line of men. Behind it, five other figures slowly emerged from the, out of the woods, each with the same pale, waxy appearance. A young woman in a jogging outfit stumbled forward, the top portion of its suit ripped off, exposing where the breasts and the flesh around its ribcage had been eaten away. 
A middle-aged man in camis and a tan hunting vest stepped up beside her, tripping over its own intestines that hung out of the gash in its abdomen and dragged along the ground between its legs. Three teenage boys in shredded mountain bike outfits, each one coated in a layer of mud and blood, brought up the rear. The first figure moaned, but not in pain. It almost sounded like a primitive command. The others responded with a growl and lumbered towards the hunters. A wad of tobacco fell out of Buck's gaping mouth and bounced off his shirt. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Shit, man, said David. It's like in one of them Cesar Romero movies. George, corrected Johnny. Huh? Cesar Romero played the Joker on Batman. George Romero made all them zombie movies. Shit, man, whatever. You know what this means. The others looked over at Brian as he pumped around into his shotgun. The hunt's back on, and now there are no limits. Sam stepped over to Brian. Maybe we should fall back and find a secure position. Screw that, there's only six of them. We don't know how many others are there are. Don't go soft on me. I'm not, I just don't want to get killed. You won't if you shut up and do as I say. Brian spoke loud enough for all of them to hear. Alright guys, take it slow and steady. Be sure to aim for the heads, just like in the movies. On my mark. Ready. Around him, Sam heard a chorus of rounds being chambered. Sam dropped to his left knee and squared his right leg to give him more stable firing position. Aim. Sam raised his AR-15 and centered the sights on the first zombie's forehead. His finger wrapped around the trigger and pulled until he felt the tension. Sam took a deep breath and held it. Fire! The report of seven weapons being discharged thundered throughout the woods. A mist of blood and gore momentarily formed behind the zombies. The zombies stiffened in unison as the bullets tore through their skulls. For a moment, the undead stood there, teetering. Sam waited for them to topple over. Instead, they regained their footing and surged forward. Shit, man, we missed. We didn't miss, Brian practically mumbled the words. The confidence suddenly sucked out of him. Sam watched the undead draw closer. We need to fall back and secure our position. Shut up, Brian yelled, snapping out of his shock. Ned, get over here. Despite his 300 pounds, Ned double-timed from his position at the far left of the line. Brian pointed to the zombie and rubber waiters. Move closer and take that motherfucker down. Ned nodded and slowly approached the zombies. He pulled back the bolt of his Sacco 85 Hunter, ejecting an empty cartridge, and pushed the bolt and pushed the bolt forward to load a live round into the chamber. When ten yards from the waiter zombie, Ned stopped, raised the rifle, aimed and fired. The bullet struck its mark, punching a hole in the zombie's brow an inch to the left of the first entry wound and blowing off the back of its skull. The zombie stumbled back, but regained its footing. A scowl distorted its already hideous face. It lurched forward, its dead eyes fixed on Ned. Lowering his rifle, Ned stared in disbelief, oblivious to the imminent danger. Ned, called Brian, get out of there! Snapped back to reality, Ned began to fall back, his eyes fixed on the approaching zombie. Failing to see the rock between him, he tripped and fell backward into the leaps. Most people could have quickly gotten up and escaped, all 300 pounds. Ned wallowed on the ground, a crippled animal waiting to be slaughtered. Sam raised his AR-15 and squeezed the trigger in rapid succession, emptying the entire magazine into the waiter zombie's chest. A dozen bullets ripped into its torso, turning it into raw meat. Despite the onslaught, the zombie barely faltered. It closed to within a few feet of Ned, raising its hands in front of him. Ned screamed as if terror would drive off the zombie. His screams turned into an agonizing howl as the waiter zombie dropped to its knees and sank its teeth into Ned's outstretched arm. Within seconds, the three dirt biker zombies fell upon Ned, tearing off chunks of flesh which they stuffed into their mouths. The jogger and hunter zombies maneuvered around the feast and headed for the line of still living men. Buck dropped to his knees and vomited, puke mixing with his chewing tobacco. Shit, man! This is fucked, mumbled Johnny. What do we do now? asked Ike, taking a few steps back. Brian remained silent, transfixed on watching his friend being eaten alive. Brian! yelled Sam. That snapped Brian back to reality. Fall back! What about Ned? Sam asked. Brian raised his Remington and fired a single shot. Ned's head exploded, putting him out of his misery. Now move! Ike was paralyzed with fear. 
but the sight of the undead swarming around and feasting on Ned galvanized him. He turned to run and slammed into a zombie that had closed in on him from behind. It wore a red flannel shirt and a bright orange vest stained with blood from where its neck and the left side of its face had been chewed off. The zombie grabbed Ike's head, holding it firmly between its decayed hands and sunk its teeth into his face. Ike wailed as much from terror as from pain. The others heard Ike's death throes, but ignored them, for they had their own horrors to contend with. The moaning of the zombies to their front was now echoed from behind. Sam spun around and nearly wet himself. In addition to the zombie that attacked Ike, half a dozen others approached from the woods to their right rear, attracted by the noise. Two more approached from off the dirt road, bumping their way in between the pickup trucks. The new zombies blocked their means of escape. Shit, man! David's voice wavered on the brink of panic. That's a fucking understatement, added Buck. W what do we do now? Sam asked, looking to Brian for guidance. Brian said nothing. His eyes darted from one zombie to another, filled with fear and uncertainty. With each second wasted, while waiting for a decision, the zombies grew closer. Brian's gaze focused on one zombie in particular, an overweight man naked from the waist up with numerous chunks of flesh torn out of its chest. Brian's mouth quivered. He fell to his knees, whimpering like a child. Unholstering his Colt 45, Brian drew the automatic, cocked the hammer, and raised it to its brow. Before he could pull the trigger, the overweight zombie stepped up, grabbed Brian's pistol hand, and pushed it aside. Brian looked up at the zombie, his eyes wide and vacant. He did not even cry out when the zombie bent over and clamped its teeth onto Brian's lips. Johnny observed Brian's breakdown and fought back one of his own. He moved closer to the others. Sam, what do we do now? Sam ejected the empty magazine from his AR-15 and inserted a full one. We fought our way out. David and Johnny picked the two zombies nearest them and advanced. They opened fire, hoping to blast the path to safety. Johnny emptied five rounds in succession from his Remington A bolt into the chest of a male zombie wearing a Boy Scout Master's uniform. The buckshot peppered its chest and ripped portions of decayed flesh out of its back, yet the Scout Master zombie still advanced, reaching out to grasp its prey. Johnny waited until it closed to within a few feet and breached another round, only to find he was out of ammunition. He tried to retreat, but the Scout Master zombie clasped his shirt and dragged itself onto him. Johnny held up the rifle in front of the zombie, blocking it from getting too close. The zombie pushed against the rifle in a hunger-induced frenzy and knocked Johnny back off balance. The two tumbled backwards onto the leaves. When they hit, the zombie's teeth sank into Johnny's shoulder. Johnny used the rifle to push it away, screaming as a chunk of flesh tore off between the zombie's clenched teeth. Before he could roll over and escape, two other zombies fell upon him. In the meantime, David aimed his Tika T3 rifle at a zombie in a county road crew uniform and began firing. Each bullet tore away a portion of skull and brain until with the final shot, the remnants of its head were blasted away. Decapitated, the zombie continued forward. Though it blindly steered away from David, David backed away, waiting for a chance to run, and bumped into something. Turning around, David stared at the waiter zombie. It glared at him bits of Ned dangling out of its mouth. With an animalistic growl, the zombie plunged its teeth into David's face. As the undead closed in around them, Sam watched and learned. The zombies couldn't be stopped, but maybe they could be immobilized. They can't eat you if they can't reach you. He lowered the barrel of his AR-15 and aimed at the leg of one closest to him, a once gangly hunter whose beard and mustache were caked with gore. Sam squeezed the trigger several times until its leg was severed just above the knee. The zombie toppled to one side and sprawled onto the ground. Sam jumped over the zombie as it flayed around. He ran a few feet before spinning around and calling to Buck. Shoot out their legs, it'll slow them down! Four zombies were closing in on Buck from each side. Buck lowered his 12 gauge shotgun and blew off the leg of the zombie in front of him. It hopped around unsteadily on its one good leg. A blast to the chest knocked it over backwards, clearing an escape path. Buck went to run, but a second zombie grabbed him from behind, wrapping its partially fingerless hand around his neck. It pulled Buck against its chest and ripped into his neck 
with its teeth tugging at his flesh and muscles. The third and fourth zombies joined the feeding frenzy, one grabbing Buck's arm, the other dropped to its knees to gnaw on his leg. Buck's anguished screams turned into a gurgle as blood poured down his throat. Sam turned to run, but his left leg was held in place. He fell over, wrenching his ankle in the process. Looking down, he saw that the intruder, who died by their campfire, had come back to life. Lowering the barrel of his AR-15, Sam fired three rounds, vaporizing its wrist. The hand still clutched his ankle. Sam rolled onto his chest and scrambled to his feet. A bolt of pain shot up his left leg, so intense he nearly toppled over. Steadying himself, he assessed the situation. Sam was the only one still left alive and uneaten. All around him, the zombies knelt by his friends, feasting on them as if this were a nightmare buffet at Shoney's. For a moment, Sam thought he would lose his grip on his sanity as he listened to the slurping of flesh being torn from bones. To the chewing and gnawing, to the groans of satisfaction, as these things satiated their hunger. As horrifying as it sounded, Sam realized it also signified his good luck. These things were so busy feeding on his friends they ignored him, except for the two zombies approaching from where their pickups stood, and they were still several yards away. Despite his throbbing in his ankle, Sam crouched and aimed his AR-15 at the first zombie and fired three shots in rapid succession, shattering both its knees. The zombie teetered to one side and tumbled over. Switching targets to the second zombie, he fired four more shots, blowing off both its legs. It collapsed face first onto the ground. With the path clear, Sam could now escape. That was when he noticed the deathly silence that had fallen over the campsite. Slowly turning his head, he saw eleven pairs of undead eyes staring in his direction, their attention having been drawn to him by the gunshots. It was as if they had only just realized his presence. There were no emotions in their expressions, just the collective recognition that they all saw the same thing, fresh meat. As one, the zombies lumbered to their feet and staggered towards him. Sam hobbled away as fast as he could, but only made it as far as the pickup trucks before the throbbing in his ankle became too intense for him to continue. He leaned against the bed of Donnie's Dodge as he tried to figure what his next move. With his twisted ankle, the best he could do was hop on one foot, which meant if his luck held out, he might make it a hundred yards before the zombies caught up with him. He thought about taking one of the trucks, but he had rode up with Brian, and the keys for the other trucks were somewhere amongst the pile of gore that used to be his hunting buddies. That left only one alternative. Limping over to Johnny's trailer, Sam lowered the twin ramps, crawled up onto the bed, and mounted the John Deere. Thankfully, Johnny had backed the tractor up onto the trailer, so rolling off would be easy. Sam started the 25 horsepower engine, which turned over on the first try. The Scoutmaster zombie reached the trailer first, slowly climbing on one of the twin ramps. Sam shifted into drive and accelerated. The tractor lurched forward and down the ramp the front wheels digging into the Scoutmaster zombie and pushing it down. The tractor jerked to the left as the front wheel rolled over the zombie coming dangerously close to tripping over. Sam leaned to the right as far as he could to counterbalance the tilt. Finally, the rear wheel rolled over the zombie and the tractor pulled onto solid ground and into a swarm of a dozen of living dead. The tractor crashed into six of the zombies and momentarily slowed against their weight. Dead hands clawed at him. Hungry Mouse strained to take a bite out of him. Sam slammed his foot down on the accelerator and steered right. For a moment he feared the tractor would stall. Then slowly the tractor gained traction and began pushing through the zombies, cutting them down like stalks of wheat. The John Deere swung to the right and pulled away. The zombies followed, but soon fell behind. Rolling past the pickup truck, Sam steered the John Deere onto the dirt road and headed for town. Sheriff Buford Wiggins pushed open the office door and began talking before he even entered the room. Okay, what's so damn important you had to call me in on a Saturday night? Where do you want to begin? Andy stood up to greet his boss, taking a stack of notes from off his desk. Despite his frazzled expression, he was still organized. It started about two hours ago and hasn't stopped since. First, Junior arrested Sam Grodin out on the Lake Road. He was riding a tractor and ranting about his hunting party being eaten. Eaten? 
Andy shook his head in frustration. Sam stunk a beer, so Junior booked him on a DUI and tossed him in the drunk tank to sleep it off. Is that it? You wish. Andy thumbed through the notes. We've gotten calls from several families whose kids haven't returned from a Boy Scout outing near the lake. They were supposed to be home before dusk. We've also received reports about trouble up at Lover's Point, as well as a disturbance on the campground. Old Man Johnson called about 10 minutes ago complaining about someone bothering his cows, and that doesn't even include a half a dozen missing person reports we've received. I've already dispatched two units to Lover's Point and two to the campground. That's when I ran out of units, which is why I called you. Shit, Buford removed his Stetson and placed it on the counter. He used his hand to flatten down his comb over. All right, call in Curtis and send him out to Old Man Johnson's. It's probably just some college kids horsing around, and I don't want Johnson shooting them. I'll check out the lake and see if I can find those Boy Scouts. Roger that. Buford placed his sets and back on his head. This is going to be one hell of a long night. Thank you all for tuning in. This is Scary Teller, and you just heard part two of Cruise of the Living Dead, a zombie anthology by Scott M. Baker. Don't forget to follow the links in the description. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel here. And don't forget to stay scary.